Diaz, Robbie Lawler, they both weigh in. Now, th this was an interesting one. A number of days ago, we get armed with the information that Nick wants to change the weight class to middleweight. And right there in and of itself is interesting because Nick can show up and miss weight. People miss weight all the time. If Nick was to show up and he was to miss weight, he would have to forfeit some of his purse. If he can get it agreed upon ahead of time that they're just going to do it at 185 pounds, he now doesn't have to give up any of his purse. What does Robbie get and why would Robbie acquiesce? We could only guess. I imagine that Robbie got some level of participation, something along these lines from the organization, but I'm guessing. I don't have any evidence to that. And if I was to predict for you what would have happened, what do I do when I give a prediction? I put myself in his shoes. What would I do? I thought that Robbie probably would have changed it from five rounds down to three. I'll go up the weight class. I'll, I'll, I'll spot you the weight. I've never fought 185 pounds. It's a little bigger than I like to go. Probably going to deal with some fatigue. Give me three rounds. That's what I would have guessed. Didn't see, didn't see anything about it. Didn't hear anything about it. All I know is Robbie said yes. I don't know where Robbie's credit is. I feel, I feel like he should get some, man. If, there's, if there has ever been a cage fighter created, it's Robbie Lawler. So you are left with how did we get to this spot? How did Nick not make weight? And I tried to get a little inside scoop on this, and I talked to Brett Okamoto. I said, Brett, what are you hearing? What, what, what is the word on the street around the camp? He said, Chael, real simple, he could have made weight. From what I'm hearing, this is Brett, from what Brett's hearing, he could have made weight. He just didn't want to go through the process. And Nick's, Nick's got like this real 50-50 balance going right now. Half of him does not want to be here and hates everything about it. And the other half of him is he's going to go out and he's going to kick Robbie's ass. Like when you listen to a Nick interview or you listen to Nick talk or anything that he's done in the media, he walks this line of, I don't even want to be here. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go handle this guy. It's not going to be a problem. So according to Brett, he just, Nick just didn't want to pull the extra weight off. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I, I don't like it. That's anti-competitive. It, it, it's against the deal. When I say I don't have a problem with it, I mean, if, what are we trying to draw from and what clues can we be given as it pertains to the missing or the changing of the weight class in conjunction with how that's going to affect the performance? That's what I'm saying. I don't know that there's anything here. Sounds like Nick got out here and he, he just didn't want to go visit the sauna. He didn't want to go through some of that grueling part of the process and miss. Okay, if that's true, we can all get up and go home. There's nothing to see. But what if it's not? What if it's not true? Because you are asking me to accept and to believe quite a bit. You're asking me to believe and accept a 170-pounder, a lifelong 170-pounder who has a fight scheduled for 170 pounds, three days before weigh-in, just decides he doesn't want to sweat out the extra weight. So now you're telling me it's not a discipline issue, right? Anybody else that misses weight, you have a discipline issue. It was either a lack of discipline with your diet or a lack of discipline with the training. That would be peculiar. If a guy has been out for five years, and by the way, wasn't kicking ass when he left those five years ago, wasn't winning rounds when he left those five years ago, and now he's not in the gym and he's not busy. Ring rust is very real. Dominant Cruz, only, only name that comes to mind, who didn't show a level of ring rust. And I understand that guys come back and they can win. I'm talking about were they rusty? Did they look as good as when they left? No, no, generally they don't. Now, for, for, the, for the ones that do and they still do get a positive result, they're in the gym, they're working very hard. So they're mimicking as close as they can. They're duplicating in the training room as close as they can to what they're going to be doing in live competition under the unified rules. If a guy is overweight, it would lead you to the conclusion that that's not the category that he falls into. Then a training video emerged of Nick Diaz and he was doing some shadow boxing. A lot was made of that, possibly more than needs to be. I know what those, those rooms are like. You go into a small room, they got a backdrop behind you, they spray you with some water, hey, turn this way, hey, turn this way. And nobody's in there trying to look good. No, nobody's really doing some real, you know, you'd have to be a pretty dorky guy to want to look really great in those moments. At the same time, somebody videoed that that is supposed to know fighting. Somebody assessed that that's supposed to know fighting, and then they released it to the community of people who do know fighting. That, that, that's an issue. 
That part is an issue for whoever filmed that and didn't have an eye enough to know you're not helping anybody by putting that out, but they put it out anyway. That's a bit, that's a red flag right there. How's Nick going to do? It's going to be a boxing match. I think we can all agree on that. It doesn't have to be. Robbie has the skills and the ability to get takedowns. Nick will cooperate with you once you take him down. Nick is not going to submit anybody from his back. It's a very good place to try to put him. Robbie won't do it. Robbie's just too stubborn. And you do have to wonder, okay, if Nick isn't in prime form, does that mean that Nick can't win? I, I don't think it does. I think Nick is going to win. I predict Nick. I predict Nick largely because Robbie Lawler, as of late, right? It's tough. It's tough. There, there was one point in Robbie's career, and it all had to do with Florida and the American top team. When he moved his camp and his train specifically to that gym, he went all the way on to become a champion of the world. When he left that gym, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to bring up Sure Dog and check some stuff. I don't think he's won a fight since. I think of, of his last, we're talking about Robbie Lawler, but of his last three losses, I believe they were all post American top team. So, whatever good positivity was coming from his participation with that specific gym is now gone. Like Robbie's attitude. Like the fact that he took the fight, like the fight that the show must go on, like the fact that he didn't look for an excuse, ask for any changes, demand a change in rounds, nothing. Seeing some real good things there. But in all fairness, look, they, we've, we, we got questions on both guys. Nick's been out for a period of time, well documented, great. Well, Robbie hasn't spent a lot of time in the cage himself. Not a lot of time. Not as of recent. So they're both coming back. Now they're going to do it at 185 pounds. The, the, neither one of them are excuse makers. Neither one of them are trash talkers. But the fight has a lot of questions. Where do we go from here? What is this about that led us to this in the first place? What, only part of the story that's been left out. Why, why are you guys here? Why are you doing this fight again 17 years later? Is there, is there anything here that we, the audience, can draw from? Because you're running out of time. You're running out of time to tell us a story, but you do have our interest. The other side of the coin is they, they both got more questions than answers, at least at this point.